Okay, today's video is about chasing the high. And I'll explain what I mean by that. When you struggle with a restrictive eating disorder, you get this high from being hungry, essentially, or by depriving yourself in some way. Um, rather that be through um, skipping meals, skimping on meals, exercise, lower level movement, um, delaying meals, avoiding eating, going through rituals to get yourself to eat, um, having to like earn your food. All of those are ways for you to seek this like high um, that you'll experience when you've got a restrictive eating disorder, which makes that eating experience, once you're finally able to let yourself eat, so exciting and so just like the highlight of your day. So when you've struggled with an eating disorder for long enough, you start to realize I'm living my life so that I can have that high. I'm living that, <laughs> I'm living this life. Essentially, my life is centered around when I can eat next, how I can earn, you know, the ability to eat, um, how I'm going to perfect what I'm eating, how I'm going to come up with the million and one rules that make me feel in control of, of my eating to ensure that I do not allow for any weight gain. And it, it just becomes so all consuming that typically when people reach out to me, they're at a point where they're like, I'm done. Like I can't, I tap out. I cannot live this life one more day. And they're usually pretty desperate, right? And pretty um, miserable. And so in order to recover, you know, I, I harp on all the time about like retraining your brain and rewiring your brain and how you look for these opportunities to rewire. But also on top of that, um, you've got to understand that you're going to have to stop allowing that high to happen. And let me interpret that more clearly. What I mean is you've got to stop letting yourself feel hungry. And so when I talk about how I had to eat like every five minutes in recovery, essentially what I was doing was I was just nipping that high in the butt, like not letting that happen. So I was proactively listening to my mental hunger, which was pretty much every five minutes. But on top of that, the reason I found that effective was because I never gave room for me to get that kind of like endorphin rush or that serotonin release of like, oh my gosh, I somehow succeeded in life. I, I won the gold medal because I went into this meal with perfection, right? It's almost like a sickening way of describing it, but literally like that's what it would feel like for me. And so when I obviously, you know, decided, hey, I got to do this, I got to rewire, I just found, I didn't really know why it was so effective, but I just found that eating constantly, if I was awake, I was just eating, kept me from ever experiencing that high. Now, of course, it was really scary to do that. But what I found after a couple of days, weeks was like, I'm not really craving that high like I did those first few days or weeks. Um, similar to, you know, like somebody who has a drug addiction or alcohol addiction, you can't keep giving yourself even small ver versions or variations of that high if you expect to quit that addiction. And I feel like it's the same thing when you're trying to heal yourself or when you're trying to fully recover from a restrictive eating disorder, you can't let that happen. So that's why there's no such thing as too much food in recovery. Now you're thinking, but yeah, there is because I don't know, I won't know when to stop. So there has to be too much. And you will know when to stop if throughout your recovery, and the big if is if you allow yourself to eat, whatever it is that your body's asking for. So long as you don't have these limitations and restrictions and you're just kind of allowing yourself to eat a little bit more freely and a little bit more and, you know, venturing out to new foods you haven't had, but you still have all these rules that you're following, then it'll be a little bit more like, I don't, I don't know when this is ever going to end. It's, you're never going to feel like you're getting there. But if you're going into this with like, everything is free and available and I don't have to work my butt off to be able to eat food. In fact, I can just be a living human being and eat food that my brain or my body's asking me for. You'll get to a place where you naturally no longer feel that in intense like urgency to eat all day long. Okay. And it doesn't just happen like the second that you get to like energy balance. It doesn't just like, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm weight restored. Therefore, you know, I shouldn't be so hungry. It doesn't work like that. Like you, first of all, you don't know when you're weight restored. Typically it's once you kind of feel a lot more calm and relaxed around your body, how you eat, what you eat. Um, but you really just don't. It's not like a day that that happens. But it's really important to understand that as, as you get closer to fully rewiring, 
Just because you're feeling so much better mentally doesn't mean that you're not going to still have a very large appetite. I feel like for quite some time after I would have considered myself fully recovered, I had a pretty large appetite, like pretty robust. I still kind of wanted to eat a lot. I would get satisfied and full and I had more regular like hunger fullness signals, but I still just overall compared to like how my appetite is now, it was still pretty elevated for quite some time. So I have some people I'm working with currently that are in that exact stage where like they, they feel like they're getting pretty close to feeling fully rewired and the thoughts and everything are way, way down. They're doing really well, but they're like, I'm just kind of scared because I'm still eating a lot. And it's like totally, totally normal totally normal. Now, the important thing also to remember is once you get to a place of energy balance and you've been there for quite some time, you don't get a high anymore when you feel hungry. Like when I feel hungry, I want to eat. When I feel hungry, I am agitated and annoyed and I, I want food, right? It's not the same as I was when I was sick, where it was like when I felt hungry, it like turned into more restriction and my brain went crazy on me. And so you'll know when you're, you'll know when you're in a good place because that'll, that'll be kind of one of the the um, markers that you're looking for is when you feel hungry. And I'm not saying ravenous, I just mean a little bit hungry. It won't like trigger you into wanting to restrict. It'll just encourage you or it'll motivate you to go and get food. It's, it's really that simple. And that doesn't that sound just a little bit more normal. So that's kind of what you're gonna be going for um, as you progress to recovery and just some things to kind of keep in mind. You cannot keep chasing the high. You have to shut it down completely by listening to all mental hunger eat as frequently as you as you possibly can. You can't overdo it. Eventually your body's going to tell you when it's full, when it's had enough. Um, and that's not going to happen until you've been in energy balance for quite some time. And once you're even there, you're still going to have a really, really large appetite. But by that point, you will have rewired that drive or that kind of like pull or addiction to like feeling hungry. It won't feel good anymore. So if you're in recovery, main message here is don't ever let yourself feel physically hungry. You're way past hungry if you've gotten to that point. Okay, have a good day. Bye.